Hey guys, what is going on? Going to break down a pistol strat here. Again, it's from the grand final, and obviously it's Cloud9. I'm just going to keep milking this baby, but let's get into it. So Cloud9 here, head towards the B site of Mirage, of course. But to start off with, they're just going into a very basic default, covering all their bases. You can see there, Tarek is tucked away, playing a little bit of an anti-flash position, while Skadoodle's one peeking middle. If they do go some kind of mid-aggression, Russian automatic up here, making sure no one pushes into Palace. Obviously, someone could have walked a main, that's really the only opening. And then Stewie's here making sure uh, no one's having a little wander into the B apartments, as uh, Carrigan sometimes actually does like to do, especially on gun rounds with Guardian, but this isn't a gun round, so they're not really going to see anything. And eventually, after they're happy that no one's going to push, they can set up for their execute, which of course, as I said before, is to be set up over at the B site. So they'll keep this one going. We'll just have a look at the map. You see the players rotate over here. Skadoodle keeps watching middle, and all five players are going to end up here in the apartment area. So this is where the execute actually comes in. Just as a bird's eye, so you get an idea of what to look for in the future. It's just a double smoke here towards the pillar, along with two flashes thrown over by Rush, and Tarek actually misses a Molotov, but we'll get into that later. And what this does, as you're sure you can work out for yourself, is it isolates Carrigan on the site. Olivemeister and Guardian can't help out from the short position, where the USPs are their most deadly at those longer ranges. So let's start with the fundamental of this take, which is the two smokes thrown. If you want to know how to do them, Rush comes into this corner, aims at the bottom of that pillar, and it's just a pretty standard jump throw, and that one smokes off the right pillar. And then also from Tarek's point of view, who obviously smokes off the left pillar, he lines himself up, actually with the floor here, just a little bit left of the, the edge of the doorway. And he also is going to do a jump through, he's going to aim at the bottom of this little window thing, I guess. And he's going to do the left pillar. And so what does this achieve? Well, obviously, as I said, it leaves Carrigan isolated on the site for Cloud9 to swarm onto, because anyone from the short position can't see onto site, they can't see in the apartments. Olivemeister can see a few heads as they jump out the window. They're incredibly tough shots to hit. Also, because these smoke's going down, as long as no one comes fast out market, it allows Cloud9 to set up for their ideal post-plant positioning to give them the greatest chance of winning this round. So the two flashes now, which are in the hand of Rush. You'll see it's just a basic double flash over the B apartments here. So you'll see his first flash goes off, and if we pause it right there, we'll see they're not really in a position to pounce off this flash, it's just popped. Carrigan is being forced away. It's going to make any players uncomfortable around here, maybe denying them some movement as they realize the take's coming in. Also, the flashes here as the second one comes through. We see he actually misses it, but I think this makes the timing even better. He would just pop it here, and you'll see it actually uh, is to deter Olivemeister. He was a little bit pushed up, but if he's closer here, he could maybe think about maybe pushing through the smoke. And if he gets flashed, it's just going to make him a little bit uh, less confident in this, and he's probably going to fall back away and give him the site for free. You see the flash has just popped here on the map. And basically, from our sky point of view, you can see anyone, again, anyone playing bench, anyone playing here, as Stewie's jumping out. So you look at the timing of this one. This is why I say I actually quite like the fact that he, he did miss it the first time I had to re-pull out the flashes, because this timing is almost perfect for these players coming out the apartment to blind anyone. Carrigan's not blind because of this tarpaulin in this particular situ situation, but you can see it's not going to be a full blind because you are so high up in the sky, but it's enough to make a player uncomfortable and give these players extra time just to move up into the site and just swarm onto the bomb site. The last piece of utility thrown, as I mentioned before, was Tarek's Mist Molotov. And this actually links in what I was talking before with players trying to help out Carrigan and giving Cloud9 time to get these overpowered after plant positioning. So you can see here, this one was obviously intended to head towards the market door area. And what I was saying before, with Olivemeister locked out here, the obvious place to try and maybe help Carrigan out if there's a player there rotating in time, maybe the player coming through jungle, they get an inkling that's going to be towards B. He can maybe come out the door here somewhere to help out Carrigan. So he's not so isolated, still difficult for them to hold the 2v3 or 2v4. But with this Molotov intended to go down here, it basically leaves one avenue for him to come out of. And also, you have to jump up this window, obviously. So if you want to try and get out fully onto the site to help out Carrigan, you have to get the jumping in accuracy as these players swarm the site. So this is just another area where they're making sure another entrance that no one can come through, no one can help out from, and really just putting even more emphasis on the fact that they really want this site and they really want Carrigan isolated. Now if we continue this one through, look at the avenues they take. They're both just they're just streaming down here. Skadoodle comes back down the middle and that basically becomes a bit of a three-pronged attack. So it doesn't matter where Carrigan is, what pillar he's hiding behind. He's gonna get peeped by two people at once. And really unless he falls all the way back to these areas, uh, he's really gonna get caught off guard. One thing actually to mention is it's probably pretty common for Carrigan to fall back into this position here. So that Molotov could also be a way of making sure Carrigan doesn't escape and go for a full 5v5 retake. They really want this initial kill, even though the B bomb site is pretty hard to retake. One last thing to note is the afterplant positioning, of course. Extremely important to this. I mean, if you can't win the afterplant, I mean, you get the bomb down, but you still lose the round. So what have they done going into this one? Rush has stayed back, the one throwing the flashes, remember, and he's just making sure no one's on the flank. 
as if you can hold down apartments, retaking the B site becomes very difficult for the CT side. And then you see this little crossfire or kind of like opposite fire, I guess you could call it. Stewie's watching short, Automatic's got anyone coming out our door and window. Skadoodle's also looking towards short and Tarek's about to move his way out here to this pillow so he can swing either way. So this position is very powerful, especially with five players alive. Because no, no matter where the player's coming from, Tarek can swing accordingly. If someone starts to come up short and comes down this alleyway, Tarek can have a little peek this way, have a line of sight that way. Or if he can play the other way, if he's safe from this way, he wants to peek people coming out of market, he can peek out this way. Obviously in this situation, three players coming from short, he's much more likely to play the pillow this way and have his teammates deal with rain. Then Rush, of course, being in the apartments makes it very difficult for them to come in because he can just peek angles like this on anyone coming up short. So if we play this through, I'm actually going to show it with the map. See, Tarek does move to the pillar, as I said. All of Meister takes out Stewie, so that's this engagement here. You see the adjustment. Tarek is here watching door as rain comes out. He's just, just swung onto it. It's this fight, he needs to win this one. Obviously, you have to hit your shots in this situation. Automatic would get caught off guard. If Tarek doesn't win this fight, Skadoodle might have to swing, but Skadoodle's in a, in a fight with Olive Meister, Rush helping out. If Rain managed to get out and tag out Automatic, this is where it gets a little bit sticky, but luckily Tarek holds this angle, so it's a little bit of a two men can shoot the same guy, as long as Olive Meister is kept in at bay by Skadoodle and Rush. So you can see, you see two players are concentrating each area. Obviously, Automatic's looking this way, so he's a little bit torn where he's supposed to look because Olive Meister is close. Play this one through. Automatic does actually peek out. Rain misses a couple of shots on him. Tarek doesn't. Really does eventually take him out, and the players on short are all fired upon. They work out where Guardian is, and just like that, the round is over.